I am teaching one of the best GeoGuessr players in the world, Trevor Rainbolt, how to memorize all of the area codes in the United States. We will know it. Really? Yep, all of them. Oh. I'm okay. And if you don't know who Trevor Raybolt is, he has one of the most amazing and entertaining TikTok YouTube channels out there. And all from just playing this game called GeoGuessr, where you basically get this random Google street image and you have to plonk it on a map where you think that the location is just from the photo. Now Trevor takes it to the extreme. He'll look at one of these images for a fraction of a second and he can tell you exactly what country and where in that country it is on the map. It is wild. Guessing where I am on Google Maps, but only using the grass, but in 0.001 seconds. But the image is black and white, pixelated, and I can only see telephone poles. What the hell? So I invited Trevor Rainbolt onto my Kilimanjaro trip because I thought, you know, this guy likes to travel. He needs to familiarize himself with geolocations of the mountain. We are here at Kilimanjaro, the entry gate, Mashami route, and he's gonna climb to the top of Kilimanjaro. And I'm gonna teach him all the US areas area codes while we're climbing the mountain. Yeah. There are 317, it's a lot. And with the added extra challenge that his brain is gonna be thumping from the altitude as we go to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Things didn't go to plan for a number of reasons. One, I tried using a new camera and everything is out of focus. Everything. Nice. The second thing is he actually did not feel good after day three or so. How was your hike? I thought it's sort of easy. I'm like, wow, this is steady. And that last mile we just did. Yeah. I was like, kind of hey, I was going. talking my talk way too early. Karma. Yeah. It did not. It was not easy. We did it maybe overestimate how hard doing some mental task, like memorizing so many numbers, would be when you're trying to battle altitude and headaches. Right. Montana. Montana? Uh, 4 -0, uh... I remember trying to coach him on like day three or four and he was just sulking there, uh, head in his hands, and he seemed alert, but then later he told me like, I don't remember anything you said because I was not paying attention. My head was throbbing. So we quickly realized that this was a bad idea and um, I reevaluated and when we got back, we had a call and I said, listen, I need to redo this video. It's fine because the whole thing was that on the mountain, we just got carried away with the mountain. It's hard to do anything when your brain is feeling like it's being squeezed. So let's redo it, right? I don't have to teach you everything again. You kind of know my approach. The idea would be that, you know, I give you a certain amount of time and you can see if you can do it on your own. What do you think? Yeah, I think a week. I think what we do at the end yeah. is we uh, we do a GeoGuessr kind of US, like urban 1v1 yeah. or something. That'd be good, yeah. We're going to set a deadline in a week from now, seven days. We're testing this again. Nice. Okay. We'll take that. And if you're wondering if he summited or not. You made it to the top, brother. He did. Dude, it's real. How hard I've never it? been more proud of myself. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life by far. And now for something completely different. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further, I think it makes sense to do a little history on area codes. Let's do this. Area codes, a brief history. It's 1947. It's a time when rotary phones were the cutting edge technology and the nation is experiencing a post-war boom in population and telecommunication. Oh, and you decide to call your friend who's across the country oh, and you realize, oh shit, there are more people with phones now than there are possible combinations of seven digits. So, they implement the North American Numbering Plan. They being the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, AT&T. For those of you not from the US, this is just a phone service company that's basically had a monopoly on everything phone related in the 20th century. Anyway. So they came up with this North American numbering plan back in 1947, had like 82 to 85 or something codes for the whole United States. Most states just had one code. And actually the convention was that any state that had just one code had a zero in the middle. So like Montana was 406, Florida was 305. And then any state that had multiple area codes would have a one in the middle. Like New York had 212. Albany area was then 518. West, like Buffalo area was like 716. So basically an area code is a three digit number that goes before the seven digit number that indicates where you are in the country. Thank you. 
Now, fast forward to today, and this is what the area code map looks like. So many numbers, all three digits, right? There's actually about 300 to 400 different codes here, and that's always increasing, right, as the population increases. But what you'll notice is, some places like Montana here, very sparse population, only needs one area code for the whole state, 406. On the flip side, you have a place that's really densely populated like Manhattan, and you have a bunch of codes there. You have 212, 646, 332, even 917. That's just for Manhattan. For the boroughs, you even have 718, 347, 917 as well, 929, and that's just in the area of New York City. You know, whenever I'm trying to memorize something, I'm looking for patterns. So if there's some pattern to how these numbers were delegated, maybe I can take advantage of that and learn that instead. Uh, turns out, no. This makes my job harder, but I can still do it. Okay, so now what do we do next? Well, I gotta learn it. So, you know what, actually the first thing I need to do is figure out which ones I already know. Once I know that, I know the ones I actually have to memorize. So let's go do that. I got this website here from Trevor, actually. Um, let me record this. But basically, it's a map of the United States. I think it's gonna quiz me on all of the area codes and I just gotta find it on a map. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna know very many here, but this is what this is all about. I guess in the future, this is what I want to be able to ace. So let's take a look. Right, okay, so 231. Yeah, uh, that should be, a, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> 716. I don't know, 207. I feel like I should know that. Uh, maybe it's Maine? It is Maine. Okay. 253, 719, uh, 910. Jeez, I don't know any of these. So it's quite clear that I don't know very many. I gotta learn a shit ton, over 300 which isn't too bad. What's my mode of attack? Well, it just so happens that I personally have a number system where every three digits is a person, a character, a human, an animal, something that is in my own experience of life and memory. I've associated every three digit possibility with one of those people. Each one of those area codes, I can just assign the person to something about the state or the area of the state. For example, 316 is the area code for Wichita, Kansas. My image is RoboCop and I connect that to or link it to Wichita. Wichita reminds me or sounds like witch. So for whatever reason, I think of The Witcher, which is played by Henry Cavill. So I picture Robocop and Henry Cavill as The Witcher just beating the crap out of each other. 316, Wichita. Another example, 502, which is Louisville, Kentucky. 502 is the Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. And Louisville, I had a dog named Lou one time. So I picture the Emperor and my dog, Lou, eating some Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that helps me remember that 502, the Emperor, oh, is in Louisville, Kentucky. Now what I taught Trevor on the mountain was a little bit different since he doesn't have a three digit system. And most of you don't, if you wanna try this. Another alternative, and this is pretty quick to set up, is just to give a code to the numbers, specifically the digits zero through nine. All right, it's mostly based on the alphabet. So one is an A, two is a B, three is a C, four is a D, five is an E, six, is the only exception, it's an S, just because at six and S kind of sound very. Seven is a G, eight is an H, and then nine, also an exception, an N, just because nine is very N sound. Okay. okay. And then zero is just an O, because it looks like an okay. O. And with those, I can make little words. For example, 414 would be dad. So whatever 414 is, I think it's Minneapolis or something. I don't know. What is 414? Oh, it's Milwaukee. Okay, so Milwaukee, it could be as simple as me picturing my dad going for a little walkie, a little walk. Take my dad for a little walkie. 414, D-A-D, -D, dad, a little walkie on a leash. You get the idea. And then Atlanta, I know is 404, so that would be D-O-D. -D. Maybe that's Department of Defense, Atlanta, I don't know. The Atlanta Braves, you think of something brave for defense, Department of Defense, something like that. This will get a little tricky because you got to dig for a unique word, and that's not always the case. I remember making some of these images for Trevor on the mountain, and some of them were really hard. All right, we're here up on top of Lava Tower, which is one of the prominent features here. I mean, look at this. Achilles up there. There she is. So some examples. Denver is 303, so that's uh, cock, very memorable. So we just picture um, a lot of cocks, a lot of cocks in Denver. Portland is a lock. We picture a lock on the weather. It's always rainy there, so it's locked in. So lock translates to 503. Just to give you some flavor. Yummy. 
Now, here are a few more examples, rapid fire style, that I was able to teach Trevor while on the mountain. You ready? It's gonna be fast, so follow along. Here we go. First, we got 603, that translates to SOC, sock, New Hampshire. New Hampshire looks like a sock. Montana is 406, so that's DOS or DOS. I feel like in Montana, it's so rural. Everybody who lives up there has a computer that's still running DOS. 405 is Oklahoma City. 405 translates to DOL or doll. So I picture in the middle of Oklahoma, there is a meat cleaver chopping a doll in half. 504 is New Orleans, and that translates to LOR, which I could continue on the word Lord of the Rings. Lord of the New Orleans Rings. 312 is Chicago. That's a cab. I just picture taking a cab in Chicago. It's filled with cabs. That bottom part of Alabama, that little, that little thing. That's 251, which is BLT. And it kind of looks like a camel toe. So I'm gonna picture that it is a BLT with a camel toe in it. You're welcome. Enough with the explanation. I need to get started memorizing this stuff because I'm meeting with Trevor in a few days and if I don't get started, he is gonna kick my ass. So without further ado, cue the memorization montage. Pretty good first pass. Yes, memory champs use flashcards sometimes. The act of me making the flashcards, the easiest study hack of all time, will actually further cement the numbers in my mind. All right, I think I'm done. After a few days of studying these numbers, backwards, forwards, inside out, I feel like I've got them down to the best of my ability. I am ready to take on the best GeoGuessr in the world. By the way, do you remember that map that I failed so miserably earlier? Well, I finally nailed it. So if you wanna check it out in its entirety, check out the link above or in the description. It's a really long video. It's boring and nerdy, so I'm not gonna include it here. But I will test you on some of the area codes that I've mentioned throughout this video. I wanna see if you were paying attention and if you remember them. What was 504? That was New Orleans. L O R, Lord of the Rings. What was Denver? Denver had loads of Cox, C O C, 303. What about Chicago? There were cabs in Chicago, C A B, 312. What about 414? 414 is D A D. Your dad was taking a little walkie in Milwaukee. Let's do one more. Where was 251? Translates to BLT, that BLT at the bottom of Alabama. Nice job. Anyways, on to the match with Trevor. Three days later. Dude, I, I have two rules. My strategy is if I don't know what it is, just guess New Jersey or Texas. Because I feel oh, like shit. for some reason, okay. like New Jersey has like a shit ton that like I just forget sometimes. Yeah. In Texas, I just like. Texas is a beast. So after a few pleasantries and deciding on some rules, we got started. Best of five matches, so first to three, on a GeoGuessr map that only shows US area codes on billboards or some kind of signage. Simple enough. The only thing we had to agree on as gentlemen was if we got a non-visible sign, we choose Brazil. So we both got zero points. Kind of like a voided round. What if I guess closer in Brazil than you? I, I, I tested the setting and it's yeah. anything below the equator is uh, zero points. Mm. So, ready? Yep. I'm, I'm locking in, so if, if I okay. don't talk, okay. I'm, I'm just focused. Game one. I, I, I really want to lock in. Let's do it. All right, okay. Round one. All right, first round started off hot out of the gates with both of us knowing them pretty well. I got hit with one I knew, but somehow just forgot. That's massive. Oh, it was Anaheim. Fuck. Nice one. That was a bad one. Fuck. He then missed a large one, guessing Ohio when it should have been St. Louis. Oh, bro. What? I don't know this. Oh, that's pretty bad. Missouri. Oh, dude, look at this game. Oh, dude. Now it was suddenly a close game, but he secured the win after I flubbed on an area code that I should have known. You know this one? Yeah. <laughs> I should have known this. We even talked about it on the mountain extensively. Oh. oh. Of course. Game oh, one. Dude, that's the one that I don't have a image for. I just know. So Trevor went up 1-0. Wow. Ah, of course. Let's just, we can play oh, it was close. It was just a bad guess at the end. Let's do it again. Round two. Round two was not Trevor's best game. I got them all right, but he made quite a few flubs. His first was getting 3-2-1 wrong. He thought it was Orlando, but it's actually more to the east. Wait, why the east there? Am I dumb? And then he got hit with two big losses, guessing New Jersey when it was Indiana. No. Yes. No, okay, okay, okay. Lock in, lock in, right, lock in, right. lock in. And then 217, he told me he confuses the I states. So he was a bit far east and that cost him the game. 
I get the eyes confused. I get Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, always freaking confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it's one of those, it's not too far. You're not going to lose that many points, right? Is that nine or 17? Dang it. Is Dude, it? I, always get, yeah. I always get the I, the eyes confused, bro. Fuck. Oh, uh, GG's. I was guess one, one. Now these next two rounds, round three and round four, were super interesting. Round three went crazy long. We were neck and neck, just chipping away at each other's score up to 28 rounds. But in the end, it went to Trevor. Damn. Good one. Two, one. Round four, however, was kind of crazy. Could say I beat the GeoGuessr champion, Trevor Rainbolt, in a two-rounder. No. Oh. Well, that's a big one. Oh, no. No. I was long in Island. New York and then switched. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oof, he's gonna live in shame for that one. All right, was it two two? Two two. All right, two two. All right, this is it. Oh, we're we're going in game game seven, the NBA Finals, right here. So we were tied two two going into the final game. Doesn't get more exciting than this. Start of the round started close. A bunch of area codes that we both knew pretty well. Then I flubbed on six one six. I don't know what I was thinking there. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah. No. No. Then he made a surprising error on 415, which is pretty generally known to be San Francisco. No. Oh. All right. Oh, yeah, I think that was Bakersfield. We got 206. That's easy. That's Seattle. Then he made two mistakes Ooh. in a row. Ooh. Oh. And then 407. To me, I've grown up with people from Orlando, so I know 407. Just happened to be in my favor there. Well, since you know this, I might be going back to the locker room. Oh no. Dude, I had you at 200 points. I cannot choke this lead, bro. That would be so bad. Just keep not He points. seemed to forget it. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. No, no way, bro. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's no wow. way. Wow. Oh. oh, man. Orlando, oh, dude. If you want to watch the whole match, round for round, no cuts, no nothing, no voiceover, whatever, I'll put a link up in the corner here and I'll put a link in the description as well. Well, that was close. No, seriously, that was awesome. Uh, Trevor's such a good sport for even going up against me and for letting me go up against him. I could have gone either way. I forgot some, he forgot some. It was really awesome to spend time with him on the mountain to talk shop and how he learns things and for me to learn from him, for him to learn from me. And I think you'll be seeing him in a few more of my videos down the road for sure. Oh, hey, and if you're interested in ever joining some of these adventures that I run, shoot me a DM. We're always happy to have anybody join these things and create a lifelong memory. Whether you're memorizing area codes or not, or just memorizing your life, it's the same principles. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share, like, subscribe, all the things. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.